Let's start off with a serious halt for junctions turning right. The candidate has been advised there's two roundabouts very close to each other. We're going to go ahead at the first one and then turn right at the second one. Now the candidate could have moved to the right hand lane here and used the right hand lane to go ahead at this first roundabout then come off directly in the right hand lane and then be ready to turn right at the second one. But they choose not to. It's not essential, not a major problem at the moment. They check it's safe to go on the roundabout and it will look safe. But the main thing to remember to do now as soon as you exit the roundabout, we have to remember we're turning right at the second one, so we need to move to the right hand lane. The candidate forgets to do this. It probably doesn't help that their rear wiper is not on, and making it hard to see behind them, even though this is something we've gone through multiple times on their lessons. The road signs and road markings confirm the middle lane that they're currently in is for M23, and Crawley, and the A23. And those turns are left and ahead at the roundabout. Now, we're not expected to know the roundabout, but if the examiner's asked us to turn right, we are expected to be in the right hand lane unless road signs or road markings specifically direct us otherwise. So we're now trapped in the middle lane. Now, the candidate could potentially have turned left in this lane, so this lane does go left, and they wouldn't have then got a serious fault, but they continue in this lane, they follow the lane well keep within the markings and go towards the outside lane. The problem now is though, this lane goes towards the M23, towards the motorway. The candidate is now trapped. The lane is only for the motorway, but they're not allowed on the motorway. So they then cut across the lanes and go around. But you can't do that in that lane. So that's why they get given a serious fault for junctions turning right. They need to be in the right hand lane on approach to the roundabout because they're turning right. It's a really tricky one, as often if you get into the wrong lane, you can just follow that lane and go a different way. It's not a major problem. But on this occasion, the candidate couldn't go the wrong way as it went onto the motorway. So once they got in that motorway lane, there's nothing they could have done to prevent failing. You need to make sure they're in the correct lane and approach the roundabout. You won't always have an option to go a different way. Now let's look at some parallel parking. The candidate has been asked to pull off on the left and they're now being asked to drive forwards and stop next to this silver vehicle and then reverse park, i.e. a parallel park. They've checked it's all safe with their mirrors and their blind spot. They control their speed well and signal left due to the oncoming vehicle for they know we're stopping next to the parked vehicle about to do a parallel park. The oncoming vehicle patiently holds back Candidate selects reverse, has done all their checks to make sure it's safe, and then starts reversing back. Starts steering in as the back of their vehicle has cleared the park vehicle. All quite good. And you get to a half decent angle, and then start to go back a bit. Then they get a little bit wibbly wobbly here, and the front gets a bit close to the park vehicle, but they stay calm, straighten the wheels, and go back straight a bit to keep away from the park vehicle and get closer to the curb. They then steer away from the curb, but it gets a bit close to the back and they realise that and stop because the back wheel is about to touch the kerb. Now at this point there is space between them and the parked vehicle. So all they need to do is pull forwards and steer full lock to the left and they're basically done. But they don't realise that and they decide to start again. The candidate just needs to calm down and not panic because they got a bit close to the kerb. But they rush to a decision to start again. Not a major issue, they did check it was safe to pull away. And then they do all their checks again to make sure it's safe to back up, making sure the oncoming vehicle has pulled before they start. This time though, when they back in, they steer in too early, and they're getting very close to the parked vehicle on the left. As they back up, the back of the vehicle starts to get very close to the curb again, and the candidate starts to panic even more, as they're now wedged between the curb and the parked vehicle. This time there's no space at all in front of them to pull forwards and straighten up. They make the correct decision to pull out the space. But when they pull out, because they're so stressed, they don't check their mirrors or their blind spot to see if it's safe to pull away. And they're given a serious fault for move off safety. After they pull back out, they're trying to get an angle again. But when they back in, the front is coming far too close to the parked vehicle. And the jolting of the car there is the examiner jumping on the dual brake 
as the front of the R vehicle is about to hit the park vehicle. The examiner then calmly asks the candidate, that's fine, please just drive on. And they're given a serious fault for reverse park control. It's a real shame, as on the first attempt at the parallel park, they were basically there. All they needed to do was drive forwards and steer full lock to the left, and they would have been parked. And then it would have passed their driving test. Maybe we've got a driver fault touching the curb, but it would have been given no serious faults on the parallel park. Now, unfortunately, I haven't got complete footage of this serious fault as the camera cut out and glitched, but we can still see most of the event and it's still a very useful video, so I thought I'd still show it. The candidate has been asked to turn left at the second set of traffic lights. The first set is the one we're currently at that's just changed to green. But they're doing well so far, no serious faults in their test so far, only a couple of driver faults. They're checking mirrors and signaling left as they're turning left at this second set of lights. As they turn in, there's a pedestrian on a scooter. The candidate thinks they're about to ride straight in front, so they stop midway through the traffic lights. And that's unfortunately where the camera cuts out. But the examiner has to say to the candidate, keep going, it's not safe to stop here. And then gets given a serious fault for response to traffic lights as they stop at a green light when there's no need to stop. Let's look back at the footage in slow motion and zoom in. The scooter rider is slowing down. They may put their wheels onto the road, but they've slowed. They're also looking towards us, and their scooter is aiming to go around the back of our vehicle. They don't have any intention to go in front of us. They're just going to stop and wait in the middle of the road. Normally, you would stop for a pedestrian if they step onto the road. But on this occasion, the pedestrian is out of the way, on the other side of the road, and it's not safe to stop, as it's a very busy junction. If we try to stop, chances are we would get rear-ended from a vehicle behind who wouldn't expect us to stop. Now let's look at a serious fault for response to road markings. At the mini roundabout, we're going to be turning right. Turning right is quite tight, as it's a mini roundabout. It's also hard to see to the right due to the brick wall. They rush up to the roundabout a bit fast, and then rush their observations, and then pull out too fast. They mount the roundabout, and almost hit the traffic island. That's given as a serious fault for response to road markings, as they mount the roundabout, rather than going a bit slower and going round it. By mounting it, they almost have that collision with the traffic island.